Okay. So, here I am. I'm sort of on time. Um, maybe a little bit late because <laughs> of a uh, technical hiccups and things because I did originally want to do this Facebook live on my Healing the Patriarchy with Love page um, but it wouldn't let me because I don't have enough followers on there apparently. So here I am on my he the Healing Temple of the Light page <laughs> on Facebook doing the live and I'm also going to post this um, to Facebook um, to Facebook to YouTube as well. So I just want to give a welcome to anybody, whether you're watching live um, on the replay and whatever um, post or platform you're watching on. Thank you so much for being here, for being interested, for watching and listening and being open as well to what I'm sharing. Because what I'm sharing is a little bit different to how we normally speak about patriarchy. And... I know that patriarchy can be quite a triggery topic because, you know, it's the cause of so much damage in the world. And for many of us, we've experienced personal hurt and damage as well through patriarchy. So I wanted to speak a little bit today about my own experience um, that brought me to a realisation around patriarchy and a way in which we can fast track healing for ourselves and the world in view for a world free of patriarchy. Now, what I want to say is I don't know if we will have a world free of patriarchy in my lifetime or even in my son's lifetime. All I know is that the more work we do towards it, um, the faster it's likely to show up in everyone's reality. I also believe that we're all living in our own little mini universes. So it's highly possible that, you know, um, maybe I can live in a universe free of patriarchy if I do enough towards that. And maybe you can too. Or maybe we won't see it in our lifetime. But I do know that it's still very worth doing the work in this lifetime because we need to free the other generations of patriarchy too so it's not just about our world hi joe oh it's always lovely to have you here joe thank you for coming along and thanks for saying hello as well um so what i want to speak about really is just a very brief overview i don't want to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of my journey and i think most people have heard it now anyway and i don't want to bore anyone so i've lived in a very patriarchal world for the first mm, well, I'm 48 now, so about 46 years of my life. And that looked like being um, abused and raped and bullied. And everywhere I went, I was essentially assaulted and picked on. To the point where I was assaulted in public. Um, I was just assaulted wherever I went, actually. <laughs> there was always something happening to me, some kind of assault or something happening to me. And it was all very patriarchal. And the people around me were very patriarchal. So by that, I mean they were misogynistic. So even women were misogynistic. Misogynistic being the hatred of women. And I also include within that not just the hatred of women, but the hatred of feminine energy as well. And for a long time, of course, I couldn't work out what was going on. And then I think you all know that I fled at the start of the pandemic. And that gave me some space and a bit of time to heal. And that space and time to heal meant that I had a bit of time as well to use my uh, expanded awareness, which I am gifted with, um, to kind of realise, you know, what is patriarchy really? Where's it coming from? So what I want you to do now is just think about who you know in the world who's patriarchal. Now, this isn't so that we can sit here and slag them off although I know that might be quite fun. <laughs> it's not for that and it's not to project blame on them. I just want you to think about, you know, maybe there's somebody actually pers in your personal life who's very patriarchal or maybe there has been in the past. Or, you know, if, you, if you've been lucky enough not to be able to recognise that in anybody that you know or have known, maybe there's a celebrity. I can absolutely guarantee there'll be some world leaders in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> that are patriarchal that you can kind of think, oh God, yeah, they're so patriarchal. Oh my God, you know. And I just want you to think about them and just kind of bring them to mind, which I know is a bit icky if they're very patriarchal. But just for this, just bring them to mind and just think about them. And then I really want you to feel into what is the driving force behind that with them? And I know I know the obvious answer is, oh, they want power, they want control. Um, and all of that might well be true. But I want you to kind of feel deeper than that. So I want you to kind of travel a bit deeper, journey a bit deeper into, into what's happening with them. And I just want you to think about, or feel into is probably the best way to do it, really. Do they love their own hearts? Do they love themselves? Can you feel that they have any kind of love for themselves? I'm talking about true love, real love, unconditional love, compassion, care, nurturing, nourishing. Or is that just completely void? Is their brand of loving themselves a tainted kind of love? And is that what is driving their patriarchal behaviours? And it's okay whatever you come up with. I mean, of course, I have my own ideas and things around it and I, and I have my own realisations when I do this. And it's free for you to have yours. And you can share them if you want, um, but you don't have to. You can just keep them as a personal realisation if you want. And then I really want you to think about as well, you know, are they frightened of their own hearts? Are they frightened of emotion? And I have to say, every patriarchal person I have ever encountered, and I've encountered loads from all different walks of life, men, women, you name it. And whenever I've encountered them, I have always sensed within them a terrified inner child and a fear of emotion. And so if I can say, well, they're frightened of their inner child and they're frightened of emotion, where do those things dwell within us? Where, where do our emotions spring from? Where does our own innocence, which is our inner child, where does it live within us? Well, I can say with certainty that mine are from my heart. And something else I can say with certainty is I used to act patri patriarchal, which people find really shocking. <laughs> and I know that is quite shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, honestly. I used to go to lap dancing bars with the lads. <laughs> I did, honestly. And I, you know, did all kinds of patriarchal stuff, honestly. Um, and I mistrusted women. Uh, and I didn't get on very well with women. I had pretty much all male friends. And I was probably one of the baddest behaved out of the group, in all honesty, when it came to women. You know, and that's not something that I'm proud of. But it was a necessary part of my journey. Because it means that I can take myself back in time to me. And with my awareness, I can say, well, what the heck was going on then? <laughs> Why was I like that? You know, I mean, my past is really... Um, quite coloured, <laughs> quite interesting. It's not what you would expect if you've been watching my videos and my meditations and things. You'd be quite shocked, I think. But if I take myself back to that, what was going on with me was I was in so much pain and I was terrified of the pain. Not a clue how to process the pain. There was also, of course, the factor that I'd only ever been surrounded by patriarchal people, so I, I didn't have any other 
any examples either around me, you know, any positive examples. And me and everybody else were terrified of our emotions. And I'm a very emotional person, so you can imagine how deep the fear was for me. But also I was just completely overpowered and overwhelmed by them. I didn't know how to process them. And the reason why I didn't know how to process them is because I didn't realise that they were just living in my heart and they were just asking to be freed. You know, there were just certain things that would happen in moments in time that were pre-planned by my soul that would activate the feeling so it could be released, so I could be liberated, so that more of my soul could shine out of my heart. But I was just so terrified that I wasn't able to do that. I couldn't, I honestly couldn't do it. I did not know how to do it. And it's been a long, deep and painful and very frightening journey to find out how. And the journey only really took a turn for the better very, very recently, very recently. But it took a turn for the better because for years I've been trying to befriend my heart and my inner child. And my inner child didn't trust me. And why would she? We've, <laughs> I've been behaving how I've been behaving and it's led to all kinds of things going on for her. And also, you know, she's never had anybody that she could trust in her life. So why would she trust me? So I've had to really delve deep. And, you know, in a way, this is not quite the right terminology, but in a way I've had to prove myself to her. I've had to show up time and time again in the most difficult, honestly horrendous tests. <laughs> and I've had to hold out my hand to her. And honestly, even as I'm speaking, I still don't have it down. I still don't have it perfect. But it's only since I started doing that that I'm not patriarchal and that I can really see patriarchy around me and I can see the damage that it does. And inside every patriarchal person, every single time I see that they are just not friends with their heart. And in our heart, I don't know how far you've gone with your journey and maybe you're... You kind of might be comparing now because that's quite a natural thing to do as a human. And if you are, I just want to think about, you know, have you befriended your own heart? And it's okay if you haven't because, God, it's bloody terrifying, you know. But if you have, what have you found in there? Because I found all kinds. <laughs> all kinds. All kinds of hurt and things I didn't know I was hurt over. And I found um, things out about me that I didn't know. And this is like a really, you know, like a marriage, <laughs> you know, like a relationship that's got to grow and it's got to last. You know, when you have that kind of relationship or you're trying to build that kind of relationship with someone and, and, and what you do is you have to get to know them and you have to be non-judgmental because if you're judgmental, it will ruin the relationship. And it's the same with befriending your heart and your inner child. You've got to go there authentically. You've got to authentically want to be friends and know what's going on with them. And, and some days they'll speak to you and some days they won't. <laughs> and what I've often found on the days that they won't, it's because I'm not truly authentic. I don't really feel up to speaking to them and finding out what's going on with them. And that's all it is when you befriend your heart. It's literally just putting your hand on your heart and saying, hey, how are you? But meaning it and being open to whatever comes up. And let me tell you, sometimes an absolute volcano will erupt, <laughs> a tsunami. And other times you'll just get some little pointer and it will be beautiful. And this is the entryway to all healing. And the reason why it's the entryway to all healing. Sorry, my, my earphone that isn't working anyway. It's falling out my ear, but I don't let it stay in case um, it interferes with the audio. <laughs> so what happens is, you know, going to your heart and speaking to it is really recognising that your inner child lives there. And if you think about when you were first born, so that was when you were first an inner child. 
you brought with you the spark of divinity that is your soul that keeps you animated, keeps you alive, keeps you on your unique journey and adventure of life, gives you all your unique traits that are just yours, that come through in your own way. You know, everybody's traits shine through in different ways, don't they? And all of that, the inner child is the guardian of because she brought it here. She holds the key to your divinity. She is the portal to your soul. She is the opening to more light than you could even fathom in this moment. And the way to get there is to ever so gently and lovingly Talk to her, make friends with her, listen to her, actually care about what she's saying. And don't just take it on surface value either. You know, why is she saying that? Why is it coming out like that? Why is it coming out now? What else is happening in your life? How does it tie into that? And the truth is, if every one of those patriarchal people that we were just thinking of took that journey, would they be able to continue being patriarchal? Would they continue to dictate war and genocide and all the other horrible things that are happening in the world that we keep seeing? That are a feedback system that are telling us, hey, you all need to befriend your hearts. <laughs> None of these people that we see that are doing patriarchal things, you know, and a lot comes under patriarchy, a lot more than just hating and hurting women comes under patriarchy. None of them could do those things if they befriended their heart. They wouldn't be searching for things outside of them if they befriended their hearts. They couldn't do it. And when you're patriarchal, you're stuck in your mind, you know, well, it's not really stuck because, of course, <laughs> the mind, thoughts are moving all the time and your awareness is around all different things at any one time. So nobody's ever really stuck in their mind, but they are stuck on their mind. So they believe everything their mind says to them. And until you befriend your heart and start really healing very deep layers of pain, your mind is unreliable. It only becomes reliable and the powerful source that so many teachers talk about and write about, it can only become that if you befriend your heart. Until then, it's just a messenger that is telling you all these dark thoughts and all these untruths, and it's telling you them because it's trying to get you to go to your heart and start talking to her, or him, or them, or they. It's trying to get you to go there. Because once you go there and you start venturing in, there's no going back. Because your inner child is also the guardian of your soul's path the same way she is the guardian of the soul. Once you make contact, they will lead you on a path that frees you from any patriarchy. And increases your awareness because the, the heart is the place of awareness because it's the portal to the soul so the more open somebody's heart is the more awareness they have you may notice this in yourself you know because some days our heart is a bit more closed than other days and you may notice on those days where you're not really feeling it and you just your heart just needs to be a bit more closed you don't have the same level of awareness or kindness available and that's because the heart 
is the portal to the soul and soul can see everything, knows everything. It's timeless. It's in every time and space you can even think of and be way beyond that. So it knows everything. So your awareness expands and deepens the more your relationship with your heart does. Because your heart, once it feels safe and it knows that you are listening and that you care and that you trust her, you know, him or her or them, that's when it starts to really open and your awareness will just grow and grow and you'll be able to see things, you know, from totally different perspectives that were never available to you when you were only listening to your mind. And it's not that the mind is bad or even that it's less than the heart, it's not. It's just that there's a, a rite of passage that, that belongs to the heart. And so that's why, that's why we have to go to the heart. And, and, and it's just how things are set up. So it's not that the mind is bad or useless or, or we should never listen to it, that kind of thing. It's, it's not that, you know, I'm not saying that any part of us is wrong because it's not. Even when the mind is saying terrible things to us, it's just saying, oh God, you've got, you know, an inner child in your heart that's just in a real mess. <laughs> and the only person that can heal it and free it is you. It's just trying to get your attention to draw you there, that's all. So it's just recognising that the mind is the tool for that. So it's just knowing what, you know, what each role, each part of us is playing. But when we listen just to the mind and it's negative and it's trying to get our attention to go into our heart, if we're listening to it, then we're going to end up doing horrible things because we're going to believe it and we're going to think that we need protecting and shielding from things and it will be projecting all kinds of nonsense onto people and situations as well, you know. That does happen when the, the heart isn't held. And so the only way... The only true path to healing the patriarchy is through befriending your heart. And I fully acknowledge that this is not easy. It's not easy to understand. It's hard for me to communicate, really, you know. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm only just starting out, really, properly communicating my story and how to heal the patriarchy with love, because I'm only just learning it myself. But I promise you, it just holds so many jewels that I just want everybody to experience it. And of course, you know, I've been encoded with healing the patriarchy with love and the desire for a world free of patriarchy that will be a driver for me in bringing this message out into the world. And I just want it to reach as many people as possible because... As terrifying as it is to befriend your heart and your inner child and as much as it takes, you know, you have to be resilient and you have to be um, persistent as well. And you've got to be open to pain. And so I understand that people are frightened to do it and that people maybe don't want to do it and maybe they don't even know how to do it. But it honestly is as simple as just spending some time and literally just say, hand on heart. You know, I put my hand on my heart so she knows I'm speaking to you. <laughs> and I just say, you know, how's your day? How are you in there? Or, you know, we've had a bad day today. It was really hard. How are you feeling about it? What can I do to make it better for you? It's just the same as you would if you were looking after a child. You know or a vulnerable person. If you had a vulnerable person in your wake, how would you speak to them? What would you say to them? What would you do for them? You'd take care of them. And it's just the same thing. You know, and the other thing is, once this kind of starts to deepen and take root, this relationship, you honestly will find that your relationships on the outside transform really rapidly as well. And, you know, people might fall away from your life and people that are a better match for the love that you're giving yourself will start to show up. And it's not, it's not a reward for what you're doing. It's just how the universe works. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah, they're ready for those upgraded people now. <laughs> Upgrade incoming. <laughs> 
you know, and your soul tribe will start to gather. Because until you give that love to yourself, you can't really start to have these deeper, more meaningful relationships with other people either. You know, you've got to have a solid foundation. So I'm feeling like there's not much more to say today. But if you're watching, Joe, I don't know if you're still there, Joe, but if you are, if you have any questions, um, you can type them and I, I will do my best to answer. Or if you just want to kind of be left with that, that's already been said, that's okay too. I know it's a, it's a big subject and it's, you know, not an easy one to take on board because traditionally we hate the patriarchy and we smash them on Wednesdays and we kick their head in and we want to set fire to it and <laughs> and hey I have been all of those things I've had the t-shirt <laughs> I really have had the teacher t-shirt you know and it's not that those things are bad because they raise awareness and we do need that as well Oh, you, you're welcome, Joe. Honestly, thank you so much for being here. It's always such a, a comfort when you're here. <laughs> You've got such a lovely energy. So thank you for being here. I so appreciate it. I really do. Yeah, so we, you know, I'm not asking you to love the patriarchy. I'm asking you to love yourself, which is a lot easier <laughs> than hating it, believe it or not. And hey, I don't like what they do. I don't like what patriarchy is doing to the world fucking hate it get really angry about it I'm sure you've seen me angry I post angry things sometimes you know and awareness raising awareness is one thing and and, and it does have its place and it's helpful because not everybody can see what we can see and so I will continue to raise awareness of issues and things but you know really honestly befriending your heart and loving your heart is the path out of this it really truly is for all the things that I've just shared and I'm sure that I'll be sharing more as well you know as time goes on and hopefully I'll get better at sharing as well because it's all new to me but I so appreciate everybody that's watching and you know thank you for the comments and thanks Joe for being so interactive and writing comments I really do appreciate that so I'm going to go and I am going to post this. It will stay on because it's live on Facebook and I don't I don't delete my lives. So it will still be there. So if you need to come back and watch again, you can. And I'm also going to upload it to YouTube as well. So, uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, you can find me on Facebook. So it's at Luna Louise Anna, which is the Healing Temple of the Light page. And there's also a Healing the Patriarchy with Love page, which you'll find under Healing the Patriarchy with Love. And it's got a big banner that says Lunar Anna, so you'll know you're on the right page. And if you're watching this on Facebook and think, oh, I didn't know she had YouTube. Well, YouTube is also at Luna Louise Anna, so you can find me over there. And I really do appreciate any, you know, loves, likes, comments, subscriptions, sharing, all that jazz. It does help because, you know, it means that other people can find me as well um, and also as I'm still quite early on the path of doing these things it also is very supportive to me and it does um, help me to know that you, you are interested and that you do want me to do some more okay so thank you so much for that thank you so much for being here and thank you for befriending your heart take lots of care love you lots bye <laughs>